Share this out. You know, the more people that get to know us, get to experience, you know, hear our philosophies, hear our success stories. Um, you know, I think that's the best way to attract people, right? I mean, if you're building any kind of organization, folks, by the way, and, and we're going to really get into building an empire today with Elena Cardone, because she has built an empire, uh, make no mistake about it. And, uh, and, I, and I've had the, you know, the pleasure of, of seeing a lot of sort of the behind the scenes and, and really the, the entire organization from top down. I mean, literally from from the way Elena runs her family to the way they run their companies to the way they, you know, literally, you know, just run around the world. Um, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's probably the best thing I've ever seen. I mean, it's literally, if you're looking for someone to pattern your life after, if you're looking for someone to pattern your business after, you know, pattern your mindset after, you know, look no further than the Cardones. Cause I mean, it's really, you know, they're, they're not just good at one thing. Uh, they're, they're literally good at everything. And uh, including, uh, beach football, which Elena apparently uh, must have played a little beach football growing up in New Orleans. But well, let's get into it. Um, and if my, for some reason, Matt or, or Christy, if my uh, my my sound, I'm going to pull up Suzanne here and make sure we got all our moderators up here. So so for some reason, my sound cuts out. Somebody just let me know I'm getting a little bit of a poor connection. But let's let's go back, Elena. Let's take this back. And again, folks, we're going to go through Elena's story a little bit here, and then we'll open it up for questions and make sure everybody gets a chance to uh, to chat with Elena here that uh, that wants to. So, so Elena, you grew up where? I grew up in New Orleans, darling. Who that? <laughs> so take us back. Tell us your story, and I'm going to read a first. I'm going to read something from your book, and then I want you to kind of get us get into your story, but. But I want to set the tone. You know, I, Christy and I wake up every morning. We kind of, you know, and a lot of the times I'll go down and I'll spend some time in the 10X Nation and, and, and I come back leveled up and I come back with all kinds of great ideas and information on things that I can implement into my business, into my life, into my family. And uh, one, of the, one of the things Christy and I came back from one of our last experiences down in, in Miami was, uh, you know, we got to get up earlier. So we've been getting up every morning at 5 a.m., uh, we make our little coffee or our little morning, whatever, and then uh, and then we we pick a book to read. So right now we started with Elena's Build an Empire, How to Have It All. And so if you don't have that book, you should get that book because it is literally a blueprint for how to build your family, build your organization, create your royal court. And we're going to get into all that, but I, but I want to read the first passage that she has in her book. You are either building an empire or destroying one. So Elena, take us back to those early years of when you were first starting to build your personal empire and just walk us through some, some of those twists and turns and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll kind of bring us to today. Well, when I first started to build the empire, uh, it was around 2008, ironically. Grant and I had been married for four years. We were married in 2004. And then in 2008, everyone remembers there was an economic collapse. Uh, it was the first time we were hoodwinked um, by some con artists. They tried to sue us for a bunch of money. I couldn't believe that we were conned, like hook, line, and sinker. It was a, it was a devastating time for us. Um, it was the, the, the beauty of it was is that I was pregnant with our first child, Sabrina. Um, but, you know, I was pregnant. I was working as an actress in Los Angeles back then. I, I mean, but pregnant, I, you know, it's hard enough to work as an actress now Add being pregnant on top of it. It was like, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to survive this? It was the first time that I had reality that, um, you know, middle class is just poor rich people Yeah. because I guess we were, we were kind of considered rich people at that time until a, a lawsuit an economic collapse until the bank wants to, you know, cash in on, on their money. And anyway, long story, it was just a difficult time. And so I had to really confront my situation of what am I going to do? Am I, I'm going to go all in on us and all in on Grant, or am I going to keep doing what I'm doing? But 
because what I was doing was, even though we were married, I was still operating as this independent yeah. single woman who had to do everything on her own and like it, have it your talked, own career. Be I your had own, to have be... my own career. There was right. no way I could trade in my career for a man. Like right. women across the world were going to hate me. I was going to be a sellout. How could I do this? Like I'm a loser, you know, and, and no man can control me. I mean, I had like real things to deal with in my mind. And then finally I just, I thought about it and I said, well, I can either cr go for this idea cause I've always been a visionary. So I've, I always can see the, the future and, and what I have to do in order to get there. And I could see this future of this empire and this thing. And, you know, you know, I, I, that's just my strength, my ability. And I said, you know what, if I can actually get that or work for that and have that, then I, I can, I can, I can put all of these considerations aside, go support my man, put every asset strength behind him and us and build this thing. And fortunately, you know, it's like I always say, find the one you trust and build an empire. I don't say find the one you love. I mean, because that should honestly be a given, you know, but it's find the one you trust because there's going to be moments in an 18 year marriage where you, you don't like each other. Or you don't get along. But when you trust each other, you know, your roles in the relationship. I'm executing it 100 percent, no matter what, whether I like him or I don't like him, I'm still like depended upon to deliver at optimum levels, no matter how I feel about him at the time, no matter what fight or this or that. Right. So but you so made that, that decision. Let me, let me unpack decision. some of this. Let, let I me made that, yeah. Let me, Cause I really think this is an important point. I mean, it might, might be the most important point because I, I think a lot of folks and a lot, I know for a fact, a lot of people in the, in this clubhouse today, a lot of the, a lot of the audience members are dealing with that very same, decision wh whether they have a, 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 a you know a significant other maybe they're dating maybe they're married um, or just people in their life partners roommates friends family members where they're feeling like you know that the, the, they're that that person that's supposed to be their like you know their their backbone their right hand their 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 you know you talk a lot about this in your book you know you're not you you are the woman behind your man but you're there behind pushing him you know, step making sure if he falters, you're going to pick up the pace, you're going to, you're going to, you know, not let him fall. And and so you're really the, the, the you know, the, the woman, but besides the man, but you're also behind the and I just love the way you explain all that. But, but it's a different twist, right? You said the world's going to attack you. If you if you come out and say, hey, I'm going to be a, a good mother, a good wife, a good supporter. And, and I just feel like, you know, how important was that to what eventually became the, you know, the, the Cardone Empire and the 10X Nation? I mean, I think that might have been the most important decision made, period. But but having you supporting Grant and, and vice versa, obviously, but but also just that that decision to not be sort of conditioned to go after your career and chase your whatever and, uh, you know, just and, and be independent, if you will. Right. Uh, how important, again, was that decision? Was that not the most? Well, it was a really important decision. And, you know, I traded in the career in order to trade up to what I really wanted, you know, and and it was really important because I learned a lot. I learned, you know, I learned how to work in a collaborated and a coordinated effort with a person in order to achieve a heightened level of success. It got us aligned on a mission with a plan and a purpose. So it wasn't just about me, 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 me anymore. It was like really about, okay, I'm gonna take myself to the highest level. Grant, you're taking yourself to the highest level. And anything that you go above your highest level, that's me, I did that. Everything I hit, I do above my heightened level, that's Grant. He's pushed me, he's, you know, we. that's that's what we do for each other. That, that that to me is the only reason I'm interested in a relationship. Otherwise, why am I in one? I can do what I can do on my own. Right, you know, right. what is the purpose of being with a, per a person or a teammate? If you're not going to create that synergy, create I'm that. Only, I'm only interested in a heightened level of success. Yeah. And if you're not interested in helping me reach a heightened level of success, 
I'm not interested in you. And I don't care who that is. It could be friend, person on the street. It's like, I, I, I just, I'm going on a, a mission in life to make a difference for the better on this world. You know, there's not a whole lot of loaf time. I have big visions, big dreams. I want to impact a lot of lives. And I'm just crazy enough to think that maybe I could even like achieve that goal, but it's not going to happen with wasting my time on people who are anchors, who don't want to change, who, uh, you know, who don't have the vision and the mission. Like, you know, I'm not interested. If you're interested in being mediocre, I don't, I don't, I don't hate you. I'm, I don't dislike you. I'm still going to respect respect you, but I don't have time for you. I'm on a quest to, to, to make a difference for the better that this is where I'm at in my life, you know? And yeah. so, yeah, it was important for, for that decision. I learned a lot. I learned, uh, no one has built an empire alone in the history of empires on the planet and the solopreneur and having to think that you have to do everything on your own is a trap to keep you small because you'll never get big without having people in your empire. And it starts, you know, it starts in your bedroom. I hate to put it so bluntly, but, uh, you know, it starts in the bedroom and your family and then it goes onward to your to your business partners, your collaborative partners to 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 the rest of the empire. Yeah. You know, it's funny, but I, you know, Christy and I have a very similar uh, experience. You know, we started off, you know, she was in nursing school. I was in real estate school. That's when we first met, even though we were in our late 20s. And it was right around the same time, you know, we met right around the time you and Grant were probably getting married or just gotten married. You know, we've, we've been together since 2004. And, um, and so, you know, when we met, you know, she was going one way, I was going the other. I, I, I ended up hooking up with Glenn right out of real estate school. So, you know, I got busy fast and I saw the potential with Glenn really early on. I mean, this guy was a different kind of dude and uh, he was doing things way differently. He was talking way differently. He was thinking way differently. And, uh, and, and, I, and I was vibing with his thought process. And Glenn, just like you said, only interested in achieving a heightened level of success. I mean, I was sharing this with some of my friends yesterday or some of my business partners yesterday. But, you know, even back in the day, very early on, you know, Glenn's very unassuming. He's very, uh, you know, kind of, you know, he's just kind of very, you know, uh, uh, you know, you wouldn't think he, he's not a big bragger. He's not running around beating his chest very much. He's very unassuming. He's very much like a black belt type of a mindset. But but at the same time, you know, you, you get him talking and he's always wanted to dominate. He's always wanted to be the best. You know, we used to make jokes like we're like Rome, either get with us or get rolled by us. And so, you know, he's always been that guy. He always wanted to be the best. You know, you know, we used to joke and he'd come out like number 200 on the uh, the, the most uh, influential in real estate list. And I was like, going to be number one soon. Gonna, you know, how uh, shoot. I thought, you'd, you know, like he, he always wants to be the number one most influential. So so I see a lot of similarities between him and you and Grant. And so Christy and I you know, very early on had to make that decision too. And it wasn't always easy. And there were a lot of times where, you know, I'd be going out to do happy hours or some sort of recruiting event or whatever. And she'd be like, you know, stuck home with the kids. And she'd be like, well, you know, uh, you get to go out and socialize. And I'd say, well, but I'm working, you know, this is part of my work. So ultimately, um, I think did Grant just log in? Let's yeah. See you want to pull him up, Brian? Yeah. Let me pull up Grant and, uh, I'll make you guys moderators too. There he is. Now he's on a plane, so he may not be able to say much, but we'll see if he, if you know, we'll leave his mic on. Feel free to chime in if he's available. Good morning, Grant. If you're able to say anything, feel free. But um, yeah, so Elena, I think that is the most important thing. The fact that you made that decision to sort of, uh, let's call it sacrifice, but at some level, what is the root word of sacrifice? It's sacred. You saying there's no more sacred thing than, than, than it starts in the bedroom, right? So, so now tell us a little bit more about those early years. You know, I, I love the lotto game. Actually, as a matter of fact, that was the chapter Christy and I were reading yesterday. But talk about some of those, some of those struggle times, some of those down times, some of those, so some of those mental tricks, some of those manifesting tricks that you that you utilize to keep keep the the, the boat rowing in the right. Okay. Um, good morning, Grant. Are you here? Yo, what's up? Can y'all hear me? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm up in the air, guys. Okay, you coming home or are you stopping off someplace else? No, I'm coming home. Can you hear me? Yeah, darling. 
Dude, that's okay, amazing. So I'm at 47,000 feet. Damn, you sound great. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> nice. I can hear you guys um, perfectly. I'm on Clubhouse at 47,000. It's got to be a new record. <laughs> I think we just set the new Clubhouse, uh, you know, uh, height record. Yeah, I think we did. It went down in your room. <laughs> Altitude. Um, I'm a one. I'm in the one mile club at Clubhouse. Elena, <laughs> are you in the one mile? Uh, uh, are you in the mile? I don't club? know what I don't know what you, that means. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. I love okay. it. Okay. I love okay, it. Okay. So, so Grant, uh, Brian's asking me about the early days. Uh, I wish the early days, you know, were on Instagram. Uh, because a lot of people, I think, look at us now and think that we have it so easy and we don't have struggles and um, that it was just so easy. And, and, and you know, I, I don't want to, like, disenfranchise anyone and think, oh, God, it's not worth it. Everything has been worth it. But so in 2008, we went into survival mode. There was no purpose of, you know, quite frankly, changing the planet or making a difference or you know, I, I wasn't on this financial freedom crusader binge. <laughs> it was survive. It was survive. And how do we not lose everything? It was, it was, um, it was very challenging times. We didn't, there was no designer clothes or planes or, um, G you want to say something? Okay. So, so at that time, you know, Grant's business as he knew it was pretty much over and we were terrified and I could see that Grant was terrified. Um, and for someone who is used to seeing somebody be so swagged out and so cocky and arrogant, or, or maybe that's the wrong words. Sorry, I should say confident and powerful. Yeah. So when I saw him be scared it, it really scared me and so i i didn't like that um and i didn't want him feeling sorry for himself and i didn't want his confidence dis diminished so i came up with this game that you're reading in the book called the lotto game and and i just and, and i thought of this game like i i said to grant what would you do if you had 200 million dollars which was like this I mean, it is, it's an enormous amount of money. It was so outrageous and so unattainable to our thoughts at the time. Cause literally we didn't even know if we were gonna hang on to the house. And, um, but I played this game and the reason why I did that is because you started to go, oh, what would I do? And it starts opening your mind to the possibilities of what you would create. And then I would raise it to a billion, what would you do? And then I would do this and that. And you e eventually got to the point where you, if you were a billionaire, you kind of have the idea that you can do anything, call anyone, say anyone, and you don't really care if like, you know, something doesn't go your way. Cause I don't know, cause you're a billionaire. And then an epiphany happened and it was almost like, okay, so why do we need digits in a bank account to make you assume that beingness, the feeling, the sensation of a billionaire, not go out and spend money you don't have, not be irresponsible, but why not have the attitude and wear the hat of a billionaire? Like if you were a billionaire, you wouldn't be afraid to make the calls. So make the calls or what do you have to do? It changes your mindset to think bigger. Like everything has to be bigger and more scaled out. And if you're thinking about a billion rather than a million, and so it got his mind working and taking action like mentally. And so, so I kind of, I think he could attest, I don't want to talk and on his behalf, but I think it helped him to get unstuck and less afraid because he could see that he had options and ways out and how he could create that. And so from there, we just started to take the actions next necessary that it would take to uh, achieve those goals. And, um, and, and then again, another thing, uh, early on was when I told him you need to become a billionaire. And when I first told him that he was furious at me and you know, you can understand from a, a man's point of view when his woman is saying you need to become a billionaire without explaining myself. Um, it, it was, 
it was difficult because now I put an expectation on him and when's enough going to be enough. And he's the one that has to go out and hammer and push and shove and figure it out. It's easy for me, this visionary to be like, Oh, we're going to do this and that, and we're going to do this. And over here, and you're gonna, which is not really we, it's actually him. I'm just going to support him and, 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 and flow all the power to make him able to do that. But it's really him that's doing the grunt work. And, but once I got to, um, explain myself. I explained, look, Grant, a billion is just a representation in the physical universe that you achieved a goal. It's just a target. It's just a gauge that we can say, if you hit a billion, then enough people will have been influenced by your products and services in order to amass a, a wealth of a billion dollars. Like you'd be known across the world, you know? It's, it's such a huge mindset shift i mean the you know it's michael o'malley one of one of our our friends michael and who works with you and and uh helps you build uh, your empire over at exp now and you know he used to say i'm uh, modernizing traditional you know he would that was kind of his brand for real estate and i feel like you you know they, that show modern family you guys are like the modern modern family like you know, you've sort of you sort of reinvented this idea of being a traditional family, but with like a new modern success, you know, just I mean, it's all of it. Right. It's like it's like the best brand possible because it's it's really it's family focused. But yet your family is everybody like you let all these people, this nation of 10 Xers into your family, into your life, into your homes. You you know, you've I just was at two different condo parties with you guys and you just have all this amazing cross section of people there and from all walks of life, all corners of the globe. And it's just such a cool modern, but yet based in sort of some traditional core, you know, concepts. Could you kind of maybe help me unpack some of that? Like, where did you guys develop all that? What, what, what was it growing up in Louisiana? Was it, you know, just your, your, your trials and tribulations kind of coming up in the scene? Like what was, where did you kind of develop this core philosophy? You mean the core philosophy of like just kind of welcoming everybody? Well, no, being like, like being like a traditional family, but in like the modern age, right? Like, where where did that come? Um, I, I honestly I don't know. Um, I just believe in family. I feel like the family has been kind of torn apart in society. Um, you know, divorces are you know, made so easy and people give up and, you know, have this concept of, you know, there should just be this eternal bliss and happiness. And, 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 and I'm not disagreeing with that, but sometimes I feel like people give up a little too soon in the deal rather than figuring it out and working together. And of course, I'm not saying divorce isn't necessary in all cases, but I just feel like the, the family, there's been an attack on 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 families yeah. and, and and i want to restore the value of the family and the family unit and maybe i'm just traditional and old school i don't know i wasn't like this as a kid as a kid but i was you're like, not very traditional in a lot of ways either right i mean you like gangster rap you like you know you, you're all over the place but no but that's awesome because you know I, honestly i give your book to a lot of my my friends who have uh challenges at home Right. So let's just say challenges at home. It could be a million different things. It could just be, you know, the um, one one spouse is going one way with their career. Maybe the other spouse isn't feeling like they're getting supported in what they're doing or there's you know, there's a disconnect. So I literally I'm like, you guys need to read Build an Empire, like get it, read it separately, then get together, read it together. I mean, it's helped our marriage. It's helped our business. It's helped our family. I mean, there's so many golden nuggets in um, you know, how to raise kids. Let's, let's even, let's talk about that a little bit. So how does kid, how did kids change the equation for you guys? You know, you've got two beautiful daughters, um, you know, talk a little bit about that. Well, the kids, I mean, that's just a whole nother level. Well, let me, let me, uh, let me couch it in something practical because we, we, what we do, Elena is hard, right? We're, 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 you know, selling houses. We're bringing in people who sell houses. You know, it takes a lot of energy. We're, we're doing stuff during the day, during the night on weekends. And, and I get a lot of pushback from a lot of my leaders that they say, well, I got kids. You know, I can't do all that. Cause I got kids, right. It almost becomes a shield and a sword, right? They, they, they attack with it when they, when they, and then when they feel attacked, they defend themselves with it. Right. So they, so they, they use their kids as kind of a, 
a shield, a shield and a sword. How did you guys solve that challenge? Because obviously nobody's busier than you and Grant. Nobody's doing more. Nobody's adding more to their plate. And yet you are still able to do these amazing things with your kids. So how did you guys figure out that? I got, I got what you're saying. Okay. So, um, early on Grant and I had heard people make excuses of their kids and we, we vowed to each other that we're, we're never going to use our kids as an excuse for us not doing something or getting out of something or whatever. So we just put that policy into place. And then, you know, they've been indoctrinated from a very young age, even before people, most people credit their children for really being able to comprehend things. But I mean, from when they were one, two, three years old, I, I'm, you know, I, I made it very clear that we're Team Cardone and Team Cardone wants to help people. We want to make a difference for the better. You know, do you want to do that? Do, I mean, most kids do want to help. You know, most kids have run into problems because they're not allowed to help. The parents are like, don't do this. Stop that. You know, they're they're so scared of everything. They don't let a child exchange and contribute to the family dynamic. And they that's ultimately what they want to do. So I've let them help and be a participant. And 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 how do you want to help? You want to do 10x kids? You want to get on a clubhouse? You want to reach out? You want to you want to help sell tickets? You want to greet people at our, our our events or something simple? You you draw me a picture. That's them exchanging changing. That's them wanting to help you and, and make you happy and smile, accept it. Don't just like, Oh yeah, that's great. Like, so, so, and, and then also uh, to, to, to address not being there physically all the time. If we ever had to leave, I explained to them, look, this is what we do. Mom and dad, we speak to people. Sometimes you can't come with us like when they were earlier, but your job as Team Cardone is to protect the house. That's your job. You got to look after the people watching you, not the other way around. And when you uh, allow us to be on the road and you're okay and we don't have to worry about you, you're actually helping people. That's how you're supporting helping people because you're helping us help them. And so they understand that they're not being left, that they're actually, that is their way of giving a contribution. And then every time they come home, you know, we come home, we bring a gift. Thank you so much. You did such a great job protecting the house. Everything is great, you know? So they feel like they have little jobs at three and four and seven and nine and 10 and 12 or whatever age they grow where they are to current. So that's how I did it. I've always included them. I've always let them know what the mission is. And I've always tried to let them help at whatever age appropriate action uh, that they could deliver at the time. Yeah. <laughs> you want more? <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. No, I, I love like, that. I had like five screens up, but I was back channeling a few people while you were talking, but that's you know, to me, that was such a huge piece is, is the kids, right? You know, we've got three young ones, 12, nine and, and six, you know, you got a chance to meet Taylor. She, she worked her way up to that front of that room too, Elena. She was not going to let security. She, she was not going to let being in her jammies. She was not going to let having a terrible night's sleep and having a little tummy ache. She wasn't gonna let any of that stop her. She was going straight to the front. She had to meet you. She had to see what mommy and daddy were doing. She was sick of being up in that hotel room for five days and, and not knowing what we were doing all day. And it was just hilarious. I mean, she literally was not taking no for an answer. So she, she kind of reminded me of a little, you know, little Elena, a little Christy. She was just going to she was going to get up there, come hell or high water. I was worried she was going to try and run up on stage with Grant at one point. Oh, <laughs> uh, he would have hugged her. He loved I know he would. No, I was worried. I was worried She's for so the audience. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was beautiful. You're doing a great job as a parent, Brian and Christy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, you know, again, there's a lot. You, you run into this a lot. You know, a lot of what we do here in Closers Club is we really try and unpack people's mindsets. We really try and help them, you know, transform their thinking. We help them, you know, elevate level up, realize they can do more, they can add more to their plate, the plate is not finite, you know, the plate can be expanded, you know, a lot, a lot going to these conferences, you know, I shared the story with Grant uh, a while ago, but about how when I came down to 10x, you know, I was being a little B, you know, I had, I, I had made about $50 million, I was feeling like, okay, I was using the R word, you know, the semi R word, I was saying things like, well, I'm gonna slow down, I don't need to talk to as many people, I'm gonna, you know, take in the, the beaches of the world. And, and, um, 
And I also had throat pain. Like I wasn't feeling good. I was talking a lot. I, you know, I had all kinds of, you know, health issues from breaking my hip back in, you know, 10 years ago. So, so I was kind of feeling sorry for myself. I was feeling a little rundown, <clears throat> ended up coming down to 10 X growth con. And the first person we saw was Jesse Isler. He literally talked through this whole experience where he, you know, had David Goggins yelling at him. I don't feel pain. I don't quit. And, and, and so I started doing that throughout the week because, you know, I was tired, I was feeling this th throat issue. And so I just started saying, I don't feel tired. I don't feel pain. I don't quit. You know, I'm, I'm not hung over. I'm not, I'm not feeling bad. I'm, I'm getting up early. I'm going to make this. Thing. And I just did that that whole week. And, uh, I'm not even kidding. I mean, literally the throat pain went away. Okay. Um, I'm actually talking 10 times more than I was before the conference. Haven't had the throat pain come back. And I was sharing this with Grant and he goes, yeah, you just keep it moving. He's like, you just don't let the rust cling onto you. You just keep it moving. Just keep it going. You know, he's like, you move so fast that you can't get sick, you know? And I just was like, is that it? Like, is that really what's happening? But it really is it. Like, it's like, if you just keep it moving, if you keep adding more to the plate. So let's talk about some of the stuff that you guys are doing. I mean, I think, you know, just being in close to your orbit is incredible. Seeing what you guys are able to accomplish on a daily basis. I mean, look, let's do this, Elena. Walk us through what your day looks like. Like, how do you start your day? What's, what are some of your non-negotiables? I know you get up and you, you do some, you know, some kicks and some, some punches in the morning. Like walk me through your morning routine and, and what. I wake up every morning, exactly what you said. And I go train every single day. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm up to about an hour and a half to two hours a day. Train so with who, about... train how, train where? <laughs> I train here at my gym, at my building with uh, my coach, Javier. Uh, he's an, a, a, re a retired MMA professional. So um, I'm training MMA, I'm training um, conditioning. So I do a little bit of both every day. Uh, and then that's about an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, and after that, I'm showering, I, I, I get dressed. And then from there, literally, I mean, it's just random. It's just back to back. It's all day long. I'm either on Zooms calls, uh, putting deals together, showing properties, uh, working on my listings. Uh, shooting videos, on, making shooting appearances videos. on today's show. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So it, it's just, and um I have an I have a schedule, so the assistant makes the uh, schedule, and I look at it the night before, and then I just plan accordingly. And last night I fit. I started, I guess, at six a.m. and my last call was probably at ten o five at night when I was done. I, but Tuesdays are my busiest days. But I feel great. It's like great production. I'm also doing this new um, program. Um, where I'm, I, I have meal planning. So I had never done that before. I never understood the value of food and how important food is to training. So I'm actually eating more food than I've ever eaten in my entire life. And yet I feel like I'm getting leaner and, and, and more muscle. It's just so bizarre because I was an actress and a model for so many years. And it's definitely not the way to go and it's not healthy, but all we used to do was not eat and do a lot of cardio. And so, you know, that's another thing. So recently I've just wrapped my head around with, I get, which is great because I love food, but it's just amazing to me. I can't believe all this food I get to eat and yet I'm still looking better. Like, why didn't I know this 20 years ago? I'm so freaking mad well, at you, myself. You you are amazing at another thing is surrounding yourself with coaches and you, and you, and you pull these people in like Kelly, for example, right. Or I know she, 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 she does a lot for you, but like Kelly is also like a world-class nutritionist, right? So she's got you, um, you know, eating a whole nother level of, of, of diet. Right. Yep. Um, but you're really good. I mean, you've got Javier, you've got, so let's talk about some of the, I only train with the best. I only right? train with the best. I, I, I competed three gun. Um, my my instructor at three gun is number one in the nation. He was number two at world. Joe. Um, I train with with pistol. I only train with like the number one, number two. I only train with the highest highest level. I, like I want to fast track my way to success. Now yes. I'm doing exp. I'm going to all of the like the really top of the top of the top of the professionals that have the statistics and 
questioning them. What are the mistakes you made? What do I need to do? How can I fast track my way to success? Picking their brain and then executing what they say. You know, and, and I, let I, me I, share. Let me share some insight into that. So, folks, let's let me just share this. Before Elena joined the the land speed record for adding people to your organization, especially your front oh, line. Um, was can pro- I just announce that today I hit two hundred people in hey, my hey, organization? And all that. <laughs> in, in what? In, uh, two hundred people in your total organization, and yes. less and less than and since what March? Yeah, um, in four months. May, four, June, four, July. Four, Four and a half months, yeah. Four and a half months, 200 people. And how many frontliners total? 71, and I've given almost 30 away. I've placed 30 in my downline. Wow. So so 71 in four months, folks. Prior to that, like doing really good was three a month. So let me put that in perspective. Like the person who had done the best at the highest level at EXP was doing three or four a month, maybe one a week. And Elena came in and did five a week. And so, and does, and was it from real estate had never done this before, you know? So, and now, now you can say, Oh, well she's got, she's a celebrity. So that that's easy for her. But how about this? There's somebody in her, her organization that did just as fast. And that's not a celebrity. Ann has like 39. She's incredible. And, and that's the thing. It can be duplicated, you know, like, so, so, Again, they can say, and and it's true. I'll I'll, I'll give that you know uh, a little bit of credibility. I do have a bit of a spotlight. I have an advantage. Um, you know, I ride on my husband's coattails. He's done a great job, so people know who I am, and so that could make a difference. Um, but I also am putting in the work. I'm I'm on calls. I, I'm I'm going to the. The number one MLMer in the world right now, she just, they had to make up a new status. I know EXP is not an MLM, but it does have a bonus uh, component. So I went to her. She took a meeting with me. And um, anyway, she hit two million in one week. But anyway, I went to her and I said, how do I do the calls? What do I do? How do I do it? And you went and studied Every- one of her calls, right? You were just on one of her calls yesterday. I was just on, I studied another guy's call who's created about 12 or 14 MLMs. And I, and I listened, I took notes and I, and I execute. Yeah. And so, so I'm going to fast track my way to success. I also interviewed Brent Gove, who's very successful with EXP. He's making a million a month, 12 million a year. He did it in four and a half years. I texted him two days ago. Whenever I have a question, he's trying to help me. So I go to the people who have yeah. the stats and I execute, which, um, by the way, a, a slight, humble, but unapologetic uh, little small promotion, if I can. Can I? Please. So this woman that I'm telling you about, Stormy Wellington, is going to be speaking at my 10X Ladies event. It's the Power Player Summit. So uh, this 10X Ladies in Miami, October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, I'm, I'm bringing in the elite of the elite women across the world to speak at this event. And if anyone's interested, go to 10xladies.com and make sure you get your tickets. It's going to be on a massive yacht, so I can only have 250 people. So, I mean, it's not like I can, it's not like in a hotel room where I can keep adding to people. So. Yeah, no, get your spot now, folks. I know Thank Christy's you. coming. I know um, a number of uh, uh, the power girls at EXP are coming. So you're going to have a really great crew. I'm trying to get a lot of my leaders to have their wives come down because I just think this would be, again, kind of back to what we were talking about originally. You know, it's just so helpful if if everybody in the family is rowing in the same direction and in the same boat heading to the same place you know we're normally as humans we're 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 large animal um you know we we hunt large game you know we're not typically you know we don't typically hunt you know bunny rabbits and you know uh squirrels so you know we do but we'll we'll take what we can get right if we have to but normally we're set to quest and so it takes a wolf pack well you you you're sitting at home with a wolf pack right we're often sitting here going you know, a lot of men certainly suffer from this. They think we got to do it all ourselves. We can't ask for help. You know, we, we can't ask for directions, you know, and we end up dying with, you know, stomach cancer and a heart attack because we put all this pressure on us to go out and kill the dragon every day to come home, bring food home to the kids because we've got to put food on the table. And uh, and we don't realize that those kids and that spouse and the, and that brother or that sister, they're part of the pack. They should be out hunting with us. 
And so I just love how you've given all of your family. It has like a role to play. I love how you've organized your life. I love how you've organized your, your stuff. So absolutely folks, if you want to get more of this kind of golden secret information on how to build your empire, you got to be at 10 X ladies, especially, and, and I'm bringing my, my family down. I'm going to be doing stuff with the, with the husbands and, and the brothers and the, and the fathers and the sons. So anyone who wants to come down to 10 X ladies, we'll be down there. We'll be staying at the JW. We're going to be having a blast. What are the dates on that again, Elena? October 1st, 2nd and 3rd, but October 1st is the nighttime check-in reception party. It's really the 2nd and the 3rd. And then, and if they want to go, uh, they go to what? 10, what's the 10 X ladies .com. Yeah. 10 X ladies yeah. .com and, um, and we'll get you hooked we'll up. We'll probably like sell out after this show because it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's going well, down. I mean, I would is, say this is going to be an exciting one. It's the power players edition. So it's, it's intentionally designed this particular event to be a smaller crowd of just really committed powerful women across the globe willing to take responsibility and own the power and to go out back into the communities and not only make a difference in their lives but in the lives of their families and their communities so it's going to be an incredible mixture of networking from just really awesome women from around the world who are interested in helping each other reach a heightened level of success yeah i mean the networking the golden nuggets um, just being in that orbit, it's just going to elevate you. And even us, even us, uh, dads and husbands at home, we're going to have a blast and, and do some real fun stuff and, and elevate as well. So it's going to yeah. be awesome. It's going to be awesome. These women are going to, you know, be 10 X by the time they leave empowered to live in abundance in their business, with their finances, relationships, families, and mindset. So uh, and that's that's the real beauty and i'm just going to reset the room again closers club we do this every wednesday folks don't miss these shows i mean we've had some amazing guests on we're going to continue to have some amazing guests on and uh you know people refer to this as sort of group therapy meets uh you know motivational success philosophy so i don't know we'll call it what you want but uh we're going to just keep doing our thing here and and growing this thing so if you like what you're hearing make sure you jump on elena's instagram and you follow her Make sure you, you know, if you've got questions to Elena or about anything that she's up to, 10X Ladies, her EXP organization that she's building, hit her up with an Instagram. You can actually back channel now by clicking. If you click on somebody's picture, you can actually click on that little, it looks like a little maple leaf or something and next to following. And you can actually hit them with a little little DM here in, uh, in, in Clubhouse now. So they've added that feature. And, uh, and of course, if you like anybody else on stage, myself included, feel free to hit me up with a Instagram or a, a DM or a back channel or anything. I'm just, you know, I mean, I'm easy to find. Elena's easier to find. And, and what's really cool about Elena's, they don't put up barriers between them and their, their fans and their crew and their followers and their work, the people that work with them. They, they actually break down barriers and they're super approachable. Um, you know, they have a machine in place that can handle all of the incoming you know, they've raised the bar of their professional and personal, um, you know, systems to the point where really it's limitless the amount of people that they can work with and help achieve success. So so don't hesitate to reach out to Elena or myself or, or anybody in that orbit. We're, we're here to help. And that, and that is why I think Elena and I, you know, uh, work well together because we share a similar vision. We share a similar goal. You know, a lot of people think probably, hey, Brian's hanging out with the Cardones and now he thinks he's a badass. Well, you know, I had Jeremy on last week, who's my friend, and I do, by the way, <laughs> and I love it, by the way. But, um, but I'm not. Well, you changing into somebody. Operation badass, ten x badass. Well, anyway. I did do that, so that does give me some street cred. We, we spent three days uh, shooting guns and uh, kicking down uh, uh, hot houses and clearing rooms with Elena at, down in uh, the swamps of Orlando. But uh, that was an unbelievable experience. So, Operation Ten X Badass. Keep your eyes out for the next one. Um, but. But at the same time, I feel like I'm getting back to my true self. And what, what I want to take this next piece of the conversation is, you know, that I feel like and I want to thank you and Grant for giving me and Christy permission to really be our true selves. You know, I think a lot of us have this in us. You know, we're born with this sort of fiery, passionate spirit. You know, you look at a little kid and you're like, this kid's perfect, you know, and then sort of like you were explaining early in, in your life and career, you know, the world sort of gets a hold of us, right? It sort of tamps us down. It 
causes us to mute the trumpet a little bit. It tells us to be quiet and go sit in the corner and shut up and just be, just be humble. You know, don't be so, don't be such a bragger. Don't be such a, don't be so flashy. And I'm getting a lot of that. And like, you know, whispers, I'm, I'm actually, it, I like it because it's at some level they notice you, right? I mean, it's like, these are people that probably didn't even notice before, but I'm getting a lot of positive feedback. You still hear a little bit of this and that, but, but let's talk about how you guys sort of broke through that. Because again, you know, a lot of life, and by the way, I don't know if you noticed Elaine or if you reset your room, but I've, I've got that, uh, I've got that picture of, uh, and, and I'm going to share what that picture is here in a second, but I've got that, that angel wing picture that we, that we had happen a couple uh, last week or whatever. But um, let's talk about the importance of sort of letting, letting that sort of inner golden Buddha wild person out of the cage. Like, let's talk about how that was so impactful for you and Grant and, and how you guys cultivate that on a daily basis. Don't kill me. Can you rephrase that question? Yeah. So no, hundred percent. So, so I knew I was getting a little off the rails on that. So like, you know, you guys give me permission to just be my true self, right? I see what you're doing. You're obsessed on every level, family, fun, you know, finances, health, wellness. And I think a lot of people, you know, get conditioned to sort of, you know, humble themselves. And I'll even share, you know, with Grant and I, when he sat down, he goes, you know, I said, well, I'm, you know, I'm trying to stay humble. And he said, Brian, look that word up. You'll never use that word again. So like, where did you kind of, you know, wh what, what was your breakthrough moment in that whole? Yeah. About humble and be going for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I get it. I get it. So yeah, the derivation of humble comes from the ground. It means dirt. Like, I don't, I don't want to be dirt. I don't want to be ground. Like that's what they want me to be you know they meaning whoever that suppression is in society that we've been you know duped by um so again it's about being respectful uh t towards others and and not boasting in a way that's like making others less than you but also it's about making good works known it's also about owning the responsibility of you know, inspiration. And, and, and all you need to know is if someone else can do it, you can do it. Yes. So really, that's the, that's really the, the, the viewpoint that we have. We made a vow in 2008 when we were on the verge of losing everything, that if we were ever to hit this point that we're at now in our lives, that we'd never close the curtain. So many wealthy people close the curtain and I understand why, believe me. But we made a vow to each other that we were never going to do that because when we were trying to figure it out, there was nobody that had their lives so open and transparent and mapping out a way for us. There wasn't. We had to figure it out. And, it, and, 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 and hey, we did it fast. We did it but now that we've done it, uh, I owe it to myself to be able to say, look, this is where we're at. I got to get your attention, right? Otherwise, why are you going to like listen to me? I have to show you my stats. These are my stats. It's a physical universe stat. We have successful businesses. We have planes. We have helicopters. They get attention. It's one thing to like, you know, as Grant says, you can fake a Lambo. You can't fake a jet. It's one thing buying it. It's another thing keeping it. Okay. And, and the only reason we do that is because we, we have the stat, right? We made a vow to help all the other quote unquote little people, just like me, just like Grant, Grant Lake Charles, Louisiana, Elena never went to college, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, not supposed to be here. Like uh, it's a fluke. But all the other people who think just like us that maybe if I just take the right actions with the right knowledge, if knowledge is power, what is knowledge if it's the wrong knowledge doing to you? And that's what we've all been uh, yeah. tricked with. So Grant and I have figured a few things out. We're not perfect, but we've figured a lot of things out. And I'm committed to helping others fast track their way to success. It, it doesn't need to take you two. You just need to put your head down, grind, know you're going to make some sacrifices. And you can do it in five. You know, you can do it in five. We, we had to figure it out.
uh, you know, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Uh, we're about the halfway mark here. So what I want to do now, Elena, is I want to open it up for some questions. We've got, I'm going to start with the moderators and then I'm pulling some people up on stage who, who know you and, 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 and probably want to, you know, ask you some, some, some good stuff, but let's start. Does Michael, Suzanne, Alfonso, uh, any of the moderators here of Closer Club, do you guys have a question for Elena? I got a question. Go ahead. Hey, hey, Elena, how are you? Good to see you again. <laughs> oh, you um, too. I have to yeah, the is this. You know, I've known Brian and Christy for a long time, and, and one of the biggest we, – we, we think we're successful, and then you, you see people like you and Grant and your guys is touching the lives of so many. And the thing that, that, that I have – Deal with fear, mind of failure, because that's one of my biggest fears. And I'm wondering how fear you guys. Fear failure. Take... How do you deal with that, Elena? You were clicking out, but yeah, fear, fear of failure. I've learned this. Okay, I am scared all the time. You know, when when Javi punches me, I'm scared. I hate myself <laughs> for it. I'm like, Jesus, when am I going to get over this? damn flinching thing like it just drives me crazy i'm scared all the time i'm scared of looking stupid and embar i'm embarrassed of this or that i, I don't want to work out you know I never do i want to work out like i'm not talented i get so frustrated like i can't even do a pull-up i can't even move like a, like a centimeter i'm training to do this pull-up right now i can't even it's so like why wasn't i given any talent anywhere like how come i have to fight for everything like why why can't I just be blessed in a certain way? But what I have learned is that is what it is. And I can't go on my feelings because feelings don't serve me. I go on discipline. I just do it anyway. I just keep doing it over and over and over. And I just acknowledge, okay, I feel stupid. I feel ridiculous. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so humiliated. I'm so afraid this isn't going to work. I've told everyone. I mean, I told everyone on, on EXP, right? I'm like, I have to pass this real estate exam in 28 days. Like the whole, like not the whole world. I wish the whole world. I wish I was on that level. But everybody, a lot of eyeballs were on me. Is she going to pass? the test is she gonna pass the test i was so afraid oh my god what is my plan if i fail this thing i'm horrible in school i was i was a bad student i hate it, it was, like it's traumatizing to me i just took the test anyway as soon as i passed the test i cried i was so freaking relieved but i did it but even if i didn't at least i have the balls to just put myself out there and say i'm gonna you know win lose or draw now i'm saying i'm gonna go create the largest most successful real estate team in the world like who the hell do i think i am i've been a realtor for four months it's ridiculous what i'm saying like it's just so but the, like but the but the but the crazy part is is you would you would want everybody in this room to say the same thing you know why wouldn't you want to create the largest real estate organization in the world like what do you, what do you want to create the number two or the number 20 or the number 50 like what's your goal like what i remember i remember i was in a gary v you know gary manager he did this uh private lunch at a tony robbins event and, you know he was going around the room and he was asking everybody what their goal is and then someone said well what's your goal and he said i want to be the most influential speaker in human history and everyone was like, oh, my God, how dare you? What about Jesus? What about Gandhi? Like, oh, my God, you could never do that. And he's like, why wouldn't you say that? Like, why wouldn't you shoot for being the best ever, right? Million percent, million percent. Why not go for it and, you know, put yourself out there and just be willing to fall flat on your, your face and know this, okay? You're not your feelings. You have feelings. It's like a rainstorm. You have rain. You're not rain. You're not, you're not fear. You're not anger. You're not, that's not who you are. That is something that you experience and you, and you can have from time to time. So that isn't who you are. You are uh, a powerful spiritual being or whatever it is that you believe that you are. I mean, that's who you are. You're capable of so much more than just what your physical body limitations think you can be. No, I love that. Thanks for sharing, Elaine. That's great. It's important. Yeah. Hey. I mean, you got to shoot for the. Yeah, let's let's keep going around the room. I know. Chris I have a, I have a question for Elena. Um, 
I really appreciate what you said about family. And I just want to take that to another level because I'm a grandmother and I just spent a month with my daughter and my son-in-law and my three grandchildren in Coronado Island. And it's so important to just keep growing that it never ends. And that's just what I wanted to say about that. It never stops. It's so beautiful. And um, my question is, Elena, how do you keep that mindset consistent? Sometimes I sputter a little bit on certain certain things, whether it, it's health or weight loss or uh, usually my business, I'm pretty you know, strong in that one. But I, I, how do you keep that consistent mindset? Uh, it, it starts with a decision, you know, even if you fail, like just re-decide and recommit. Like, don't beat yourself up over it and say, oh, I'm not committed, I failed. No, that's in the past. I'm not the same person I was 15 minutes ago. I'm a new person with a new decision and a new mindset. And I just keep restarting and resetting all the time. I can restart and decide on a moment's notice and I don't have to beat myself up for what I did in the past because that doesn't matter. I'm not my past. I'm who I wanna be and where I wanna go in the future. What is it that you want your future self to look like? What is it? Write it all down. Write the ideal scene. How do you look? How do you, what are the actions that you need to take in order to do it? For me, I need to hire people. I need to hire people to feed me because I don't understand anything about food. And if I have to eat my own food, I'm not going to eat food. And then when I do eat food, it's going to be like two or three pieces of pizza. And that's all I'm going to have for the rest of the day. <laughs> so I don't know about food. I need to hire somebody to get me through food. I have to have Javi train me every single day or guess what? I'm not training. I don't do it. I don't do it. I know this about myself. So I have to put people in place to help pull me through the actions I need to do in order to become who I want to be in the future. That's and so I powerful. just have a strong, a strong purpose and recommit and make a new decision in a new unit of time every single day. See, even a coach needs coaches. And by the way, it's it's not one coach. You know, uh, I think Tony Jerry said this a long time ago. He said, you know, good people have a coach. Great people have lots of coaches. And so here's Elena, who I would consider one of my coaches and mentors. And just, you know, the short time I've known her, I've learned so much from being around her and Grant and, and their team, people like Buck and Brandon and Natalie. I mean, it's just unbelievable, all these people. that, And you can get coaching in a two-minute conversation from somebody and never – meet them again, right? You don't need to have somebody in your life every single day, but, but to see what Elena does is she surrounds herself with the world's best coaches because she knows herself. She knows that she's not gonna, she knows that she's, Hey, you, you need a Fortnite coach, buddy. Uh, so they, they last days before school here, last days of summer. But so, yeah, you know, they, they that's the power of what Elena does. And I also would say, Suzanne, if, if you, if you read the book, be obsessed or be average, you know, that would help too, because they're not just obsessed with finances. They're not just obsessed with family. You're not just obsessed with health, right, Elena? You're obsessed with all of it, right? Totally. I'm obsessed, you know, and, and that's why I, I love that Grant wrote that book because it gives other people like us the permission to be obsessed and to not fit in and to not be normal and to not be made to feel that you need to be dr drugged in order to slow down so everybody else who's not as driven can feel good about themselves because Oof. you know they want they don't want you producing at massive levels when they're not because then they feel bad so what do they do they try to hold you down and say you're hyperactive you have add you can't pay attention no it's not that i can't pay attention i can do multiple things at one time i have many windows open in my brain you just don't hold my attention you go deal with that i yeah. am interested in you i got all the attention in the world for everything i'm interested in <laughs> it just happens that it's not you so don't call me add i'm add for you you know what you just said and is the embodiment of a quote i put up and I actually shared this memory on Facebook yesterday, but it was a quote I put up thir uh, in 2013. I said, the difference between ambitious and envious is when you think is what you think when you see someone who is successful, either you want what they have or you want what they have taken away. That's powerful, Brian, right? Because it is, it is. It so is. think about what Elena just said. She is going to, she's going to, not tamp herself down she's not gonna gonna mute herself with substances or 
you know, uh, negative beliefs because that's what the world wants her to do. Because what, what happens is if she's out there running laps around everybody, instead, you're, you're, it forces us to make a decision. So you look at an Elena or a Grant or a, a Michael Banovic or a Suzanne Fuqua and you go, how do they do it all? And then you either have to decide, I you have to put the finger back at yourself and go, wait, I need to step up. But a lot of people want to slow them down, and they want to and they want to trip them up. And so it, and so it's weird. But like, think about your own life. When you see someone successful, does that inspire you to want to do better, or do you get resentful, bitter, and start blaming them and calling them the reason why you're a failure and, and they must be suppressing you or holding you back somehow. And, uh, and, and just check that shit because that's, that's the probably the worst, you know, they'd say, and, 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 and there's a great line. They said the oldest and most important decision anyone can make is whether or not to choose to be a victim. So again, the oldest and most important decision one can make is whether to choose to be a victim or not. And so it's 100% a choice. You know, if you think Elena is the reason why you're failing, or if you think she's out there and her and Grant are taking everything and there's nothing left for anybody else, that is the biggest crock of shit you could ever trick yourself into thinking because that is your choice. You decided. Now, where I look at it, and Christy, I don't know, Christy, what do you think? Uh, we look at Elena and Grant, and what do we think? Um, how can we be like them? How can we emulate them? Like, how can we, what can we do that they're doing? How can we, I mean, it's just, no, it's abundance. Like, I, there's no thought of. And has that helped enough. our life or hurt our life? <laughs> A million percent help. I mean, it's been, ever since we came back from 10x growth con like we've been diff like completely different i mean we were good before but now we're just like leveling up leveling up leveling up um so thank you guys for that grant and elena but i have a question for you elena um we're in the mid like chapter nine uh can you hear me can you hear me Hey, okay, so chapter nine of your book, The Royal Court, I love that chapter because we're living it in real time right now. We're picking our royal court. How did, like, you know, you guys have Ryan, you have Jared, Sherry, like, how, like, how did those people come into your life and, and, and like, you know, I, I feel like it's such a big decision. Like, we're, we're doing this right now. Do you have any advice for Brian and I on that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, Brian said something earlier, we are very welcoming and open and, and very accessible, way more accessible than most people. But when it comes to inner circle, I'm, I'm extremely protective. And that's my role. You know, I have more of that role. Ironically, you would think it would be Grant. It's, it's not Grant. It's me. And you don't come into inner circle like without coming through my invisible barrier and and you won't feel that and you won't know that and oftentimes grant won't know that but that's the real deal like it won't happen you will get killed off and um and and i do that because i need i need very highly ethical people around grant i need um people who understand what we're trying to accomplish and so the people that are that are in our lives are all you, you, they cross they check every box they're not excessively drinking alcohol they're not doing drugs they're not cheating on their spouses they're working hard they're they're on purpose with a mission i mean there's no excuses they have integrity they're trustworthy i mean i just have our core values and and if you if you don't align with the core values like you're you're not getting in like like i need everyone i need the whole team like strong like it 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 doesn't take very much to make the whole organization weak it takes you know empires are killed from within and when you let a bad apple in, they do the most damage. It's not your enemy. Well, they they are your enemy, but they are covert, right? They're hidden, you can't detect them, but you let a person like that in and they destroy the whole operations. They, they, they start nattering, gossiping, pitting people against each other, trying to tear the organization apart. Uh, they have access to all your resources. Your now, do you get a feeling about this person before you let them in? Or, I mean, I know you've had some, you know, made some mistakes, had been tricked by and hurt by people that, you know, 
used like manipulated their way in or used a sick family member to get your sympathy and you've you've shared some of those stories with us but like do you get a vibe i mean looking back on some of the people that you didn't let in and you felt like wow good thing we didn't let them in like is it a vibe is it are there red flags Uh, uh, it's red flags I, i get a vibe too i get a sense but I study people. I, I've really trained myself because, again, I know my weakness. I'm naive. I, I just am. But I know that, right? So I have to run yeah. everything through a filter. Am I being naive? And I have to really train myself not to to listen to what people tell me, but I have to study the stats. I need to see your stats. I need to observe you. How How do you handle yourself, present yourself? Like, uh, you're going to make a red flag. I, I can, I, I just, there's certain things I look for um, that mm, spending a little bit of time with someone is going to reveal itself pretty quickly. Yeah, that's really powerful. Well, I want to make sure we get enough. I pulled up a bunch of people on stage. Bobby, you got a question? Go ahead, brother. I'm going to turn your mic off. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just always just incredibly amazed by 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 Elena. Just she just I know she's I know that she doesn't like the word humble, but modest, because I can definitely see where they where you and Grant's gotten where you've got. Uh, you know, you're just incredibly amazing. But a uh, uh, question I have, I guess you kind of answered, uh, is how do you um, not get complacent? Two two part question. One is how do you not get complacent when you've already achieved so many great things? Always, how do you continue to go? on that uphill climb to, um, can, uh, to achieve greatness. And the second thing is how, uh, time management and spending that quality time with Grant and with your children. I know you, you include them a lot, but what do you, um, is that difficult at times? Um, yeah. So, so the first part is, um, I'm no longer, I mean, I'm doing this for myself, but I'm no longer really doing this for myself my purpose, how I stay motivated. I'm at the point in my life where I could be complacent if it was just about me. But now it's about I'm determined to 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 be the best and live to my highest potential, to keep inspiring, motivating and pushing and holding others accountable to hit their greatness. Like I'm not happy that I hit it. I want us all to hit it together. So that's my new motivation. That's what keeps me going. It's not about me. It's about uh the 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 condition of the planet that i want to leave it by the time i die like i want to make a difference i want it to have an impact that i was here and 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 it's not about ego it's just i want it to it's my legacy play it's my spiritual deposit i mean i have materialistically more than enough I, i never needed any of that i still don't but i love it and that's nice but spiritually, that's how I'm motivated because I, I'm a little person, quote unquote, whatever that means. I, you know, I'm not supposed to be where I'm at. And and I just know there's a lot of other little me's out there that were just like me. And if they're interested and want to do the work, I owe it. It's my obligation to help as many other little me's out there to achieve what I have or to help them achieve their goals. Lastly, I'll say about that is, you know, for me, the greatest act of love that you can give somebody is to help them achieve their goals. I don't need you to turn off your phone and prove that you love me by watching a movie with me and like making me be the center of the earth for like an hour. That that, that might work for other people and that that's fine. That doesn't work for me. That's not love. Help me achieve my goals and yeah. I will love you forever. You become like, that is how Grant and I continue after 18 years of a lot of taking a lot of hits and a lot of challenges. That's how we stay in love because we keep creating it. I help him hit his goals. He loves me even more. He helps me hit my goals. I'm like, mother effer, I freaking you know, love you. And it's crazy to me that in a lot of relationships, the person that's supposed to be there to help you achieve your goals is the biggest saboteur. You know, and there it can it, be. It can be if they're not aligned. So. Yeah. You how know. do you get how so i mean you, you you probably deal with this a lot and certainly in your organization i mean there's a lot of relationships where you know but i see it throughout the 10x nation 
so many of your top, top leaders, their, their significant others are right there, part of the action, getting in, uh, you know, on all the stuff, helping with the companies, helping with the businesses. Is that a byproduct of being in the 10X orbit? Or are you looking for people that already kind of have that going on? Honestly, I think it's a byproduct, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's people coming in, seeing the culture, seeing what's expected, seeing the results, having the wins, you know, there's not a person on planet earth. When you are achieving your goals and you're winning, you're not hating, you're, you're winning, you're, you're feeling good. And you start giving people wins in life and, and, and they start achieving their goals. They're, they're, they're just in like everybody, like kind of figures it out and works together because you just want more of it. It's like, wow, this is living. This is life, you know? Yeah. Um, second, to address Bobby's number two question, how do we deal with the, the kids and the time management? Um, you know, I always figure out what really needs to be done. I prioritize. Um, sometimes Sometimes my kids, I can tell they need me. I've been too busy. I've, I've ignored them. I haven't been as attentive. And I can tell when they start kind of fighting with each other and things just kind of get off the rails a little. I understand, you know what? Okay, my work needs to take a back seat in this moment. And I'm, I need to go spend some time. I'm, I'm the mother. I'm responsible for the condition of this family. And so, you know, I wear every hat at 100%. So I'm, I'm not saying I'm the best. I just, this is what I go for. So I'll spend family time and, and I really put in the time. And then there's other times where the kids are just bored, you know, and they need something to do. And then it's more important that I go be over here at work and help other people and at that time okay let uh the nanny or the driver take you to someplace and go swim at the park or wherever and so i i'm, I'm constantly assessing and evaluating who needs what you know grant and i are so focused on the mission uh, you know that we don't demand a lot of time together that kind of just put your phones down that's just not us we're trying to reach seven billion people on the planet but I will say, you know, during COVID, it was a really hard year for us last year. And I, I, I needed it. I, I hated that I needed it. But I was like, Grant, we need to go away. And we did. We went to St. Bart's and we need to just put in us time. Like I, we had some friends coming to visit us. I was like, we had to cancel the friends. I was like, I can't, I can't even, I can't do this. Like I, I it was weird, but. There are like times. a cocoon phase, though you needed a little cocoon time. I was cocoon in cocoon time. phase, and and it was and it was I was odd because I don't usually need that, but it was just the family for like a couple of weeks, and we needed that, and it was amazing. But we really needed that, you know. You understand? So yep, I yep. just prioritize for what needs what when. You know, I brought a lot of people up here who know you, who have recently met you, have connections with you. Uh, Elizabeth Riley, our, our, one of our elite squad badass members. Elizabeth, I don't know if you're up on stage and you got a question or a comment for Elena, but I'd love to, love to hear your voice. We got Captain Kirk, another Louisiana native. He's, uh, Captain Kirk was texting me during fight night, and he's got some gifts for you, Elena. I don't know, Captain Kirk, if you're on, you want to pop your mic on and say hi. We got Jana Cloud out in the Bay Area. She's one of my leaders. We pulled up a few folks here. Anybody got a question for Elena that I pulled up on stage? Yeah, this is uh, John Masurli and Brian. How are you? How Go are ahead, you, brother. Elena? You know, Go it's, ahead. uh, yeah, you know, Elena, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I've, uh, met you a few times and, and spoken to you and, and I, every time I'm just kind of like in awe of, um, everything that you do. It's just amazing. And I, you know, to hear your origin story, I always knew you're an actress and, you know, you're in, L in L.A. And um, to hear that today, you know, that you gave all that up for Grant is is pretty amazing. And it started it, it started me thinking about my wife and Christy, too. You know, as soon as I came into um, as soon as Brian brought me into EXP about a year and a half ago, um, I realized quickly that Christy is does so much for everything behind the scenes so every time you know if i'm sending a text to brian i send it to christy or whatever we're talking about i try to include her because i know she's involved so much and you know with my wife um some of you guys know her some don't but 
I mean, my wife gave up her whole career. She gave up her country. I mean, she moved from Brazil to the United States. She was an engineer there, came here, got a real estate license, didn't know how to speak English. And, you know, and I changed my profile picture just now with her because yeah. I just, it's, you know, the, the wives behind the men or even the men behind the wives that are, that are realtors or whatever they do, I just want to thank them all. And, you know, especially my wife and Elena and Christy, you guys do so much. And yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks for all you do. Well, it's like one and one doesn't make two. One and one makes 11. And that's kind of the 10x mindset. You know, the, this this partner, and it doesn't have to be a wife. It could be a family member. It could be a brother. It could be a real close partner. But I just think with, with what we do, and absolutely, John, you nailed it. Christy is, she does even more than that. You know, I mean, I would not be here. I used to bring her on deals. I used to say she compliments the deal. Shit, she was the closer. Like, I think we closed 90% of our clients back in the day that I'd take her on the showings or listings with. And uh, and I was probably only batting about 50% when I was by myself. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, she legitimizes me. She makes me, you know, you know, I think a single guy out there in the world, you know, trying to make it hustle without that powerful equal partner on their on their side they come off a little desperate. You know, they appear to be a little, just a little slicker. You know, they're, you're not sure what their motivations are. Are they trying to date that girl? Are they trying to do a deal with that person? Are they, you know, they're just, it's just, it's just a different animal when you're out there on the, on the, on the prowl, so to speak, versus having that, you know, committed partner where, you know, I just feel like, you know, without Christy, we wouldn't be here. And, and really that applies to EXP. That applies to everything. I mean, she's been, She's been there every step of the way. She's done everything, you know, Glenn or myself has ever asked her to do for the company or for our family business. And, and so you, you nailed it, John. I mean, uh, we would not, none of us would be at EXP today if it wasn't for Christy. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Let's hear it for Christy. All right. <laughs> we'll have Christy on as a guest in a couple of weeks and we'll really get into her backstory. But well, listen, Elena, we got about 10, 15 more minutes here. Uh, I want to see if anybody else has any questions. Let's do some rapid fire. Who's got Who's got a question for Elena? I have a question. Yeah, I want to go. Let's go with that first person. Go ahead. So Elena. No, Michael. Somebody else said it. Hold on. I think it was Marisa. Marisa. Marisa, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Hi, Elena. It's so great to meet you. Um, I actually have a question. How do you elevate yourself when you're just starting out to the next level? Because you've been operating at such a high caliber level uh, for so long. What would What is something that you would advise people to do to step it up to be able to get to where you are? Um, I would I would find a, a mentor. I would find that's what I do. I, I, I never stop learning. I'm always a student. So find the person that has the true stat in the area that you're looking for and go deep on what they did to get there and just duplicate it. Just duplicate what they did. That's, that's what I would do. And don't get confused just because somebody is a mentor in one area. Like I could go to, uh, you know, Javier for, for MMA, but you know, Javier, is not who I'm going to go to for relationships. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have the stat in the area. It's the, so, so many people go to one person for every single area. And I think it's a mistake. I would find the best and try to figure out how you can study them or get around them or absorb the data or pay to network and be in the right rooms with powerful people. And, um, and that's, that, that's the quickest way to fast track the success. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mar Marissa's found a few of those rooms. She's uh, she she's made her way into some. She she's 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 uh she's part of the royal court here for us too. So she's really, um, you know, she's 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 getting in there for sure. Great question. Anybody else have any good questions? Or uh, let's let's keep going around the room. I pulled up Christine. I pulled up Rudy. I know Rudy's a big 10x fan. Uh, he's been he's 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 a big fan of Uncle G. Rudy, you got a question, brother? No, actually, um, it's crazy because I've been to every 10X conference and when I started, people were like, why the hell are you spending all that money to go, right? But I've grown at every one, but the last one, um, Elena spoke and I actually implemented it because she said it on stage and, and, and I give her this because 
she said you could go out all day and build an empire but then you could come home and destroy it and when i got back my mindset just changed because I was like, hey, I'm the one going out here all day, 12 hours, and totally different. Now it's like, I'm doing it for my family, which is like, I remember when she hit that, like, I literally like was in tears because I was like, dude, you're tearing down your empire. And I just want to give you props on that, Elena. Uh, oh, thank you, Rudy. That's a beautiful, um, a beautiful thing that you've done to, to change your family like that. That's so awesome. You know, Lena, it must be really overwhelming. I mean, you guys changed a lot of lives. I feel like, you know, with EXP, we've done we've done a good job of, of helping and changing a lot of lives. And, and, and how do you deal with all that feedback and all that, um, you know, just just people just reaching out to you all the time? I mean, I, you know, it's got to feel somewhat overwhelming. Or how do you how do you process all that? Well, I hope nobody thinks this uh, egotistically, but for me, it's, um, you know, I, I live for success stories. Y you know, I said earlier, I'm, I'm not doing this for me anymore. I've already got mine. So when I hear that feedback, it's just, it, it is my inspiration. So, you know, however many people say I've helped them when they win in life and and, and I have my legacy play, which is I help change the trajectory of somebody's life. Like that is the best reward I can have in my spiritual bank account. So I don't get overwhelmed by it. I don't need it to be like, oh, wow, you're so great. Or, you know, validate myself, even though, you know, I do like to be liked. I, I wish I, I didn't, but I do. But anyway, it, it's really just a validating thing because I know it looks easy from what you see on Instagram, um, but, and, and, and there, it, it does. I mean, we have a beautiful life and think, but it's, there's a lot of sacrifices and a lot of mental toughness and hits and, and learning. And, and so it makes it all worth it to, to get to the bottom yeah. line. It makes it all worth it. It makes me go, this is that what we're doing is working continue. So it's like an acknowledgement to, for me to keep going. You know what I've kind of um, started saying a lot to people that say, thank you, or, you know, show me some form of appreciation or gratitude. I say, Hey, thank me by winning, you know, thank me by, you know, continuing to kick butt, right? Like thank me by implementing, you know, they'll say, God, I got so much out of your class the other day, and I'll go, great. And I learned some of this by watching you and Grant and how you guys operate with your team and Glenn, of course, and, you know, over the years working with Glenn, you know, but it's sort of like, you know, there's no more higher compliment you can pay a coach than to implement the coaching. You know, so at some level, when I see people thank me, but they don't implement the coaching or they're not running the play or they're not doing all aspects of what we just talked about, but they're very thankful I'm kind of like, well, what, where's the disconnect, right? Well, like you're like, you just came to a clubhouse and you said this was life changing and yet you do, you went back and didn't change a thing. <laughs> right. So I don't know, you know, it's interesting, right? Uh, I'm sure you deal with that a lot, <clears throat> but uh, listen, folks, I, Elena, if somebody does want to join the empire, right? They want to come work with Elena. They want more of Elena Cardone in their life, more of the Cardone nation, the Cardone, the 10 X empire in their life. What would be a good way? Obviously, we talked about um, we talked about you know uh, uh, 10x ladies. Obviously, Operation 10x Badass folks do not miss uh, uh, any of these events. I mean, the real estate summit we were just at was was unbelievable. It was three days. Grant Cardone just in his you know just the mind of Grant, right? Just watching him go with the, just nothing more than a whiteboard and a, and a, and a, a phone and a laptop and a little bit of production. He basically broke down the secrets of wealth building, gave us all the golden nuggets he could possibly give us, and then some. And so if you're not coming to these events, you're missing out. But if they want to come work with you, Elena, what's a good website that they can come learn more about how you're building your real estate empire? They would just go to join10xempire.com, join10xempire.com, and they can learn about what we're doing with real estate there. Um, uh, I, w I would love to uh, talk to anyone that's interested in that and let you know what we're doing and, and how it works. So yeah, sign up. Yeah, sign up folks. And let's, you know what, let's leave with this. Uh, the power of commitment. You know, you, you often, I hear Grant say this, I mean, you almost lead every book, 
every speak every speaking engagement talk about the power of commitment and why why it's so important for you to have people on your organization that are committed and all in well it's like what we were talking about earlier it's like the commitment and the discipline is going to get the job done feelings aren't going to get the job done uh what gets the job done is your commitment and 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 your willingness to to keep moving forward no matter what happens without excuses so if someone doesn't have commitment they're quitting it's a freaking hard world man it is it can be challenging i mean and that's the game of life you know if everything was so easy you would be miserably depressed you need barriers you need obstacles in life to overcome and then you know you get to the finish and it's like there's the glory and the happy so I'm not I'm not dissing on the challenges, but life can, you know, life can throw you a few. And, you know, it, it, it's going to take a commitment to get you over that hurdle. Otherwise, the feelings are going to be like, you don't need to do this. This hurts. This sucks. This stops. Why am I doing this? And you're going to stop if you listen to your feelings. So commitment and discipline are major qualities of the that the people around us need to possess. And, you know, I, I need you to have commitment because if, if I allow you to stop on your commitment, you're going to allow me to stop on my commitment. And then boom, we're, we're in a sunken ship. And, and what does Grant always say? You sell how you're sold, you know, and that's why when we talk about joining us, coming to work with, you know, us at EXP or, or partnering with us or joining 10xempire.com, join 10xempire.com. You know, when you think about why do we want people that are all in, because that's how you're going to bring people in, you know, so if you're not all in and you don't believe in this and, and it doesn't permeate, you know, every, you know, pore in your body and you don't ooze and ble breathe and sleep this, this, this mission that you're on, then how can you expect anybody else to do the same thing? You know, if you're, if you're trying to, you know, have it both ways and you're working another business and you're going to do this on the side. Well, so is everybody that you bring in, you know, if you need a big giant deal or you need some sort of special set special situation because you've got this big reputation and you crushed it in some other world. And now you want to be, be, be cash in on your reputation. Well, so is everybody you bring in going to want to do it that way. Right. So how are you possibly going to be a good recruiter or a good attractor or a good salesperson if you were, were, are a shitty person to be sold, <laughs> you know, like it's just not going to work. So, you know, doesn't Grant always say that uh, you sell how you're sold. Right. And so I don't know, Elena, take us home. Let's leave us with some, some parting thoughts or, you know, we're up against the 90 minute mark here and I, I do want to be respectful of everybody's time. I'm sure we all got a million things to do. Uh, take us home. Okay. So I just want to thank you for having me on the show today and thank everyone for their participation and for staying here and for all the support and um, success that you guys are having in life and, and your commitment and your willingness to defy all the odds and go for your goals and go for your dreams. No matter how many times life tells you a no, you have the audacity to stand back up and keep on throwing your punches and, and moving forward. I respect you. I, appreciate you. Uh, you found a similar mindset of a person in me and, and I root you on. So I'm cheering from the sidelines. You are greatness. You just need to let it shine and, and don't be stingy. You know, don't withhold yourself. The world needs you. The world needs empire builders. Uh, if you think you can, then you must. And, uh, you know, don't be stingy, go for greatness and share it with the world. I need you. I need your products and services as much as maybe you need mine. So, so don't withhold yourself. Don't worry about your fears or those are, those are little things trying to prevent you from helping me and don't let that get in the way because we need you. This world, look around, it's in pain. There's a lot of challenges going on in the world right now and you make a difference and you can make a difference by smiling at someone on the sidewalk or saying hi to the grocery bagger uh you can make a difference if uh, change is power is making a difference for the better and you can do that by altering a life so go out be great nothing else pays i love you god bless and thank you that's it folks the the one and only Elena Cardone. Thanks, Elena. We love you.
Thanks, Elena. That was beautiful. Thanks, Elena. That was awesome. That was great. Amazing.